What's up, everybody? Rage Cage 20 here. Back with a Mr. Up, 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 ballin' story, Mr. B. I was gonna rhyme that, but the only thing that came to mind was Mr. B up in the he. Um, anyways, uh, today we have this girl is about to live a nightmare. And in the description, it said hashtag true crime. So we're talking about some, uh, some nightmare, nightmare shit. The first two or three seconds that played when I was full screening the bitch and trying to get it going and whatnot uh, was uh, two plot twists up in this bad boy. 15 minutes, two crazy plot twists. Looks like we got a story on our hands, everybody. So let's not waste any time here today. Let's find out what nightmare that girl is about to live. I want to make a joke, but I don't know if she comes out of this alive, so I don't know if it would be in poor taste. But then again, caring about taste has not really been, <laughs> not really been something that I'm known for. <laughs> so I was gonna say, is a nightmare greater than that gap in those teeth? I mean, that's what I want to learn. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. All right, let's get into this bad boy, Mr. B. Give me them twists. Give me a good old story. Today's story has two significant plot twists, and one of them comes at the very end. Ooh. So make sure you stick around to hear the entire story. But before we get- Why would I go like 12 minutes and be like, I don't even know how it ends. Means <laughs> to me, we're here for the whole shabinga bing. Get into that story. If you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivered in story format, then you come to the right place because that's all we do, and we upload once or twice every week. So, if that's of interest to you, please offer to detail the like button's car, but as soon as they give you their keys, just fill their car up with an angry pack of Asian murder hornets. Also, please subscribe to our channel. <laughs> For the nets got on there, I sincerely thought <laughs> I thought we were getting a little offensive here. I thought he was gonna say fill it full of uh Asian murder whores. I was like <laughs> Mr. B, I don't even know where I'm gonna find that. <laughs> Hold on, let me let me get that again. I was fiddling around with the volume controls and I missed all that until we got to Asian murder whores. <sighs> Please offer to detail the like button's car, but as right. soon as they give you their keys, just fill their car up with an angry pack of Asian murder hornets. Also, please subscribe to our channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads. All right, let's get into today's story. Right in the middle of the United States is a quiet little town called Milstadt, Illinois. Milstadt is home to about 4,000 people, and had it not been for Ashley Reeves, only those 4,000... Keanu's daughter. Uh, the first plot twist is already here people and their friends and family would even know that Milstadt existed. In 2006, Ashley Reeves was a 17-year-old high school student who lived with her parents and her younger sister Casey in Milstadt. Ashley wow. was an excellent student who, even though she was over a year from her high school graduation, she was already thinking about what colleges she wanted to go to. She was also extremely likable and outgoing, and she had this huge infectious... Oh, she did. She, she did. <laughs> Sorry about the teeth thing. <laughs> Smile. And so she had tons of friends, and she had a very serious boyfriend who her parents adored. This is a credit from True Crime Daily. Her boyfriend is uh, a, a picture from True, in, in True Crime. I think I found my perp here. His name was Jeremy, and he was a high school student as well. On the morning of Thursday, April 27th of that year, Ashley got up, and like every other morning, she got ready for school alongside her sister Casey. And then right before Ashley stepped out to head off to school, she told her parents that after school, she had a job interview on the other side of town. And then after her interview, her plan was to play basketball with some friends, and then she'd be home. And so her parents said, okay, well, hey, good luck with your job interview, and just make sure you're home before 10.30 p.m. And so Ashley said, no problem, I'll see you tonight, and then she left. 
That afternoon, after school, Ashley made her way to Jeremy's locker, and when she got to him, Jeremy handed her his keys to his car. He had an SUV, and he was lending it to her for the day so she could go to the interview and then go play basketball. And so Ashley took the keys, she thanked him, she gave him a hug, and then she turned and she walked down the hallway where she met up with her sister, Casey, at her locker, and then the two girls left the school, they went out to the student parking lot, they found Jeremy's SUV, they hopped inside, and then Ashley began driving them back to their house. When they got there, Casey hopped out of the car, she said bye to Ashley, and then Ashley left their house and she began driving to Fairview Heights, which was a town about 15 miles away where her interview was going to be. Several hours later, around 10 p.m., Ashley's parents had not heard from their daughter and it was getting close to her curfew, and so they asked Casey if she had spoken with Ashley and, you know, did she know how her interview went? Did she know when she was going to be home? But Casey would tell them, actually, no, I haven't talked to Ashley since she dropped me off from school. And so Ashley's parents said, okay, no big deal. And they called Ashley, but Ashley didn't pick up. So they sent her a series of text messages. But after a couple of minutes of not getting any response, they decided to just call her boyfriend, Jeremy, to see if maybe he knew what was going on with Ashley. But when they spoke to Jeremy, he would say that, you know, I haven't spoken with Ashley since I gave her the keys to my SUV. And I've actually been trying to talk to her all day. I've been calling her and texting her, but I still haven't heard back. It's Jeremy. <laughs> I may not be directly responsible, but it's, it's Jeremy. I know it. Fucking I, I straight up. Jeremy, I'll do it. And so at this point, Ashley's parents were starting to get really worried. And so after hanging up with Jeremy, they began calling other friends of Ashley's to see if maybe they had spoken to her and knew what was going on. But all of her friends that they spoke to all had the same story. We haven't talked to her since the end of school and she's not returning our calls or texts. And so Ashley's mother, she just sensed that something was terribly wrong. And what do you think? I don't know. <laughs> That's a pretty good sense to pick up on when literally no one's seen their, seen your daughter in like uh, five, six, seven, eight hours and not a single text or phone call has been responded to. That's probably a good suspicion to have. I don't know where you, I don't know where, how that clicked on for you, but like, that was probably a good one to have, dear. So without any hesitation, she just called the police. Now, the police in this town were used to getting calls every now and again from parents whose teenage child had run off and they were concerned about them. Right. But virtually every time the police investigated, they would find the teenager had just kind of been blowing off their friends and family and they would pop up maybe a couple hours later, totally unharmed. Right. But, but the Millstadt police would later remark when they heard Ashley's mother's voice over the phone, the fear in her voice was right. so pronounced it immediately pushed the police department to take this case very seriously well, and so i would hope you would take every case seriously even if it's just like oh they'll probably pop up in a few hours but why not let's get going i mean if you live in a small town what else the fuck you got to do but at least they took this one seriously that night, right after this phone call, the Millstadt Police Department went out in force to try to locate Jeremy's SUV, the car that Ashley had been driving around that day. And the first place they went to to look for this car was Ladderman Park, which is this very popular public park that has a really popular basketball court that lots of teenagers would go to all the time. Right, she's and she's Ashley was known to frequent that park. And this park was located about halfway between Fairview Heights, where her interview was, and Millstadt, where she lived. And so so they go to Ladderman Park, and right away, sitting in the parking lot, they find Jeremy's SUV. But Ashley is not in the car, she's right. nowhere near the car, right. and when they searched the car, there was nothing of significance inside of it. There was just some of Ashley's clothes lying around. The police would spend all night and well into the morning combing Ladderman Park looking for any sign of Ashley, but there wasn't one, and so as the sun came up and the police were nowhere closer to finding this girl, they began to suspect that, you know, perhaps foul play was involved and so the first person they hauled in for questioning was Jim, ashley's boyfriend, boyfriend. jeremy yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, the, his vehicle uh always questioned the partner yep 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 pretty standard protocol 
attacked me. But as soon as he sat in the interrogation room, he demonstrated a real concern for Ashley. He had a rock solid alibi mm. and he basically was an open book. And so they quickly ruled him out as a suspect. Mm. And then the police basically began hauling in all of Ashley's friends and acquaintances and family members, basically anybody that knew her. They were bringing them into the station to find out if they knew anything that could help them figure out where Ashley was. And more specifically, the police were really looking to see if any of these people were hiding something. Yeah, they're suspicious. Sure enough, a few of the... Look suspicious, cracking the voice, you know. Any of them that are cracking the pressure. Friends that were brought in were. According to a few of Ashley's closest friends, Ashley was in not one, but two romantic relationships. One was the public relation... Bringing Jeremy back into play, maybe he found out. Pop, 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 you know what I mean? Maybe you found out, I don't know. ...she had with Jeremy, and the other was a secret relationship that was actually illegal. In order to hide this forbidden second relationship, Ashley would tell her family and her friends that she was going to the park to play basketball, she when in reality, she was going to the right, park well. to meet yeah. up with this secret second partner. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the day before, when Ashley went missing, her friends told police that that was the exact reason she was going to Ladderman Park. The right. police got the name of this secret person from Ashley's friends. His name was Sam Shelton, and the police tracked him down. When they found him, he was at a baseball practice, but the police didn't care. They marched right on him. <laughs> Fucking, uh, we don't give a fuck. Practice over. The baseball diamond, and they. Now, what do you mean illegal? Is this dude, this dude, getting all pedo up in here? I mean, this, uh, she's got guys all around the world, man. People who just can't resist that gap tooth, man. That's that's. What's the sweet spot right there? I mean, they, they know they're getting up in that gappy. Come on, come on. They grabbed Sam and they brought him back to the police station. And then when he got there, they sat him down in the interrogation room and he's still Doesn't wearing his baseball down. uniform. Right and they one. ask him about his like relationship with degree. Ashley. And he immediately denies it and says he does not have a relationship with Ashley. He's got no idea why he's here. But pretty quickly, after a few questions, Sam's answers became inconsistent. And so the police just ratcheted up the pressure on him. And then finally, after 12 hours of questioning, the interrogator brings up Sam's mother and his grandmother. And he says to Sam, you know, how would they feel if they knew you were lying to the police right now? And this just broke Sam. And so he cracked. Now, at this point, the police were already expecting the worst when it came to Ashley, but right. they were not ready for just how brutal Sam's confession would be about what exactly he did to her. The following is... I didn't take very long. ...is an account based... Uh, well, how is... Uh, you didn't explain how it's illegal, though. I didn't hear an age or nothing. ...on his confession. 30 hours earlier, Ashley wrapped up her interview in Fairview Heights, and she made her way to Latterman Park to she meet up with job. Sam. And now it's not clear exactly how they met up, but eventually the two of them did connect, and they made their way over to Sam's car, where they became intimate. Afterwards, the two are sitting in the front two seats of Sam's car. Sam is in the driver's seat, and Ashley is in the passenger seat. And while they're sitting there, something happens that causes this huge fight between the two of them. And at some point, Sam tells Ashley to get out of the car, but Ashley refuses. She wants to talk to him. She wants to deal with their issues, but Sam's not having it. Man, he gave you an out, man. You should take the out. And so he gets so mad at her that he lunges across the center console of the car and he puts Ashley into a vicious chokehold. Now, he tells police his plan was to kind of yank her out of the car, but he squeezed so hard around her neck Ooh, that he heard this her. loud popping sound. Yeah, 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 yeah. On coming from her neck. It was the sound of her neck breaking. Yeah. And so as soon as he heard it, Sam let go, and Ashley kind of crumpled forward and hit the front dashboard of the... Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's instances where your neck can break, and you don't die from it. I'm sure I'm sure those are um, rare occasions. <laughs> sure it happens occasionally. Uh, either way, you'd be paralyzed for it. But yeah, you break the neck, you probably just fucking dead. You're fucking probably dead instantly. 
car. And so Sam is staring at her, wondering what he should do. He's kind of looking around, making sure no one saw what he just did. And then he reached over and lifted her back up to see if she was still alive. And he saw she was. Ooh. But instead of trying to get her help, he decides right then and there, he's going to kill her. Just gonna finish the job, man. <laughs> is she okay? Not for long. Come on, man. Come on, man. Don't do her like that. I mean... Think about it, murder is a much longer sentencing than, like, I accidentally broke your neck because I was angry. Like, uh, that's a much shorter term there, man. Like, at least if you try to get her help, you probably get a pretty, pretty, you know, pretty soft sentence. But you just, like, let me finish the job. And, like, fucking, you, you, I don't know. Dude must have been mad, mad. What were you guys fighting about? I hope we find out. So wait, 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 wait. Twists. Twists. One comes right at the end. Don't think I don't think I forgot that, Mr. B. I mean, there was already... <laughs> it's fucked up. There was already one twist. Uh, what could the other one be? Um, I, I guess maybe the first twist is that like she had another partner and she was lying about what she was doing at the, 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 the place. I mean, that's one twist. Uh, cause it's already well over halfway over. Like, maybe, I mean, again, I'm not rolling out Jeremy. Maybe that's the, the last twist, is that, like, he organized it. And he was like, yo, we have to kill her or something. When they found out that she was, uh, leading Bo on my dad. Playing him. That's, you know, that's gonna be my vote. I, I ain't clearing Jeremy. He's up to some shit reaches over and he begins choking her. But after several minutes of throttling her, she just wouldn't die. And so Sam pulled his belt off of his waist and he wrapped it. Like her neck is broken and you're trying to choke her out. I feel like she would, I feel like it would be an easy kill right there. But then again, I don't, I'm not that familiar with human anatomy. <laughs> I know basics, but like, I don't, I'm not a doctor. I don't fucking know. Um, like, if your neck's already broken, why don't you just, like, finish the job, you know what I mean? Like, why don't you just take the head and just see how, you know, turn it all the way around. I'm pretty sure that would finish it. Instead, you're in, well, not broad daylight, but, like, you're out in a park just, like, choking someone in the fucking middle, in the midst of your vehicle, like, hoping no one sees. I I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> a little sus, dog. But first off, don't kill people. That's also probably that's probably a, a, a PSA I should put out there. I feel like I shouldn't have to say that one, but like, don't kill people. Around Ashley's neck, and then he began pulling. But he would tell police he couldn't stand looking at Ashley's face while he did this. He said she was staring right at him. Her tongue was coming out of her mouth. She was frothing, yeah. and her face was turning this ghastly shade of gray blue. That's what and so happens. at some point, when she still hadn't died, he released the belt from around her neck, and he turned he her body. So died. She's clearly losing oxygen to the brain. If she's alive, which how do you know she's alive? <laughs> like. She's, she's gotta be pretty much on death's door probably if you just leave her there she probably ain't coming back but I, I don't know again I'm not a doctor I don't fucking know how it works she was facing the window away from him and then he repositioned the belt on her neck again all this is happening in the front seat <laughs> it sounds like and then he put his foot on her back to use as leverage and then he pulled as hard as he possibly could on her throat for quite a while until the belt actually broke around her neck and then at that point he checked to make sure she was dead and when she was he stuffed her down into the floorboards in front of the passenger seat and then he drove several miles across town to another park called citizens park that was very heavily forested and once he parked in the parking lot he looked around to make sure no one was watching and then he dragged ashley's body out of the car and deep into the woods where he abandoned her it would turn out ashley was far from the only teenage girl who found sam shelton attractive many teenage girls in the area thought he was the perfect Kim, why is it illegal, first off? Second off, like, ain't no one noticed this? This is happening up in the front seat, and he's just, like, going to town, choking, belt around throat. That's that's noticeable. And then afterwards, he looks around like, no one saw. And then he puts her... I ain't, I ain't nobody noticing this shit, man. 
perfect catch. He was smart, he was handsome, and he had these beautiful striking blue eyes that you couldn't help but just stare at. However, there was something unique about Sam that made him fundamentally different than all the other guys at their schools. Sam was not a student. He was a 27-year-old middle school teacher in Milstadt, and he also was the high school baseball coach. Got it. I was like, I'm waiting for the illegal part. Like, how old is this motherfucker? So a little bit's making making a little bit more sense here. Um, a tad bit more sense here, because, I mean, not only is it illegal, because, you know, I mean, 17 is borderline, like, legal, but still, you know, still weird, even if she was 18, um, just because you're 27, they're 18, like, a little fucking weird um but uh not only that's technically pedophilia but also on the same grounds um you, you, you're you a teacher at the school so I guess that's why he wanted to go on a do not resuscitate uh run because if he, he like they find out that he attacked like even if they don't find out about any of the other shit going on like you attacked a student like your license is done you're done like you know so like i guess i can see that now but still even though it's probably a panic decision still in the long run like it's a much lighter sentencing, man. Like, I, don't, I don't know how much lighter, but it's still lighter than murder. Especially murder of an underage girl that you were f probably fucking, I imagine, probably fucking as a teenager. Like, uh, bruh. He had never been Ashley's teacher directly. However, right. years earlier when she was in middle school, he had begun grooming her for exploitation. And so fast forward to 2006 when she was 17, Gosh. he had effectively manipulated her into believing she was in this romantic relationship with him, when in reality, he was just using his position of power to abuse her. In addition to being a school teacher, Sam was also an aspiring pro wrestler. He would often compete in local showcases under the nickname the teacher while sam was probably nowhere near good enough to actually become a professional wrestler uh, like you would see on tv uh, he was extremely strong and yeah. really knew how to do a chokehold yeah. and so when he attacked ashley and put her in that vicious chokehold she had no chance at escaping she was completely doomed shortly after you're that strong yeah you can't you can't strangle this girl to death Without rope, without fucking tying that rope around the belt, you know, roping it, like that she either must have been a fighter, like her spirit must have been fighting like mad, or yeah, you definitely weren't good enough to be arrested there, man. Like what the fuck? For his confession, Sam would tell the police that he would take them out into the forest. Was that in the fucking? I'm gonna rewind. Was that in the fucking? Shortly after his confession, Sam would tell the police that he would take them out into the. No, that was in my fucking room. Might have been the cat out there somewhere. I don't know if, you, if that mic picked that up. There's like a <laughs> sound of. I thought it was in the video. It scared the shit out of me. Don't know what it is though, but I don't see anybody or anything. So sorry. Sorry. Let me. Back this up here. That was weird. Her in that vicious chokehold, she had no chance at escaping. She was completely doomed. Shortly after his confession, Sam would tell the police that he would take them out into the forest of Citizens Park to try to find Ashley's body. But when they got there, it was late, it had been raining for several hours, and Sam right away acted like he couldn't figure out exactly where he had left her. And so the police were actually starting to think, you know, is he lying to us? Is this whole thing just kind of made up? Did he really attack her? Is she really out here? But after about 30 minutes of the police and Sam kind of trudging around the thick forest, 
One of the officers suddenly sees something on the ground. He raises his flashlight and there in a clearing is Ashley's body. And so the police and Sam, they walk over to her and they're standing above her Make ruined body. Her neck is totally bent at a grotesque angle. She's covered in bugs. But as they're standing there and they're watching her, her chest suddenly starts to move. She wasn't dead. Bruh. Bruh. I mean, she ain't in a good state. She she definitely ain't in a good position with that neck all fucked up, man. She, she lives through, she gonna paralyzed at least around this area <laughs> forever. Uh, I would imagine forever. That would have to be one hell of healing that that body would have to do to ever get anything going on around that area, uh, but I mean, it just I guess it would depend how intact the vertebrae is, but still, <laughs> um, but bro, you, you play baseball, you're a wrestler, you're strong enough to snap a neck, but you can't choke this bitch out? Bruh. Bruh. I don't even know if that's the twist or not. I mean, there's not much time left, but like, there's another twist up in there. Bruh. <laughs> Bro. Um, secondly, uh, if she did seem like she was dead, there's probably a lot of oxygen cut off from her brain. Like, if she survives, she's, she's going to have so much damage <laughs> to just everything in this area, including organs. Uh, like her brain, I don't know if she's going to live well. Uh, but fuck, dude. She had been left for dead, and she had been out in the woods with a broken neck for 30 hours in the freezing cold and the rain. She only had a t-shirt and some pants on, but she was alive. And so moments later, it's the paramedics, fighter, they man. come rushing into the forest. They pick her up really gently. They bring her out, and they rush her to the hospital where she'd be put into a medically induced coma. The doctors would tell her family that, unfortunately, her injuries were just too serious, yeah. and we don't expect her to ever wake up again. But miraculously, she would. Now, she would have to relearn how to walk and talk and eat and drink, but she would do all of those things. And today, she is 32 years old. Taking years later, wow, she's actually. Uh, she actually looks okay. I, I, it kind of seems like she's favoring, leaning forward a little bit. So I'm sure there's still some things really fucked up. But like, yeah, again, how much lack of oxygen she probably had to the brain for a long time. Uh, like, yeah, she would, uh, and also the damage to potentially her spine, or at least just parts of her neck. Like, she would have to relearn probably a lot more than just that. Um, but, uh, wow. <laughs> that is pretty crazy. She is happily married. She has two kids of her own. And by and large, she leads a very happy, normal life. As for Sam Shelton, he was sentenced to 20 years in prison for attempted murder. Right. And he's still in prison today. However, he is up for parole in 2024. So that's going to do it. If you got something out of today's episode and you haven't done it. Uh, I was not going to the Asian murder whores again. <laughs> you know, we don't, we don't, you know, that. Bro. So, I mean, you know, <laughs> another thing, you know, technically supposed to do this is a little bit here. I think it's a ghost up in here, it's fine. Uh, just banging around, moving in the camera view, whatever. Um, but, uh, like, you know, you're not supposed to blame the victim. However, if you've watched enough of these of mine, I do quite often. Now, in this situation specifically, I cannot fully blame the girl here. Uh, because, I mean, grooming is a real thing. And, like... You're pretty much being psychologically driven into the situation, so I don't really blame her uh, for being in the relationship itself with this older man. That one's a hundred percent on the on the fucking baseball motherfucker there, that teacher, uh, like hundred percent on that. 
However, I mean, what you kind of don't do, like, is this is this is a life lesson to learn here, girl, that I'm sure, hopefully, you learned, and he ain't doing this to your husband, because you don't want round two, a husband, or it's just an happily married husband, wife, they, whatever, it's, it, whatever gender your partner goes off of that you're married to. Um, um, hopefully you ain't doing it to them because like you know like probably don't date two people at the same time see people don't tend to like that now again I can't 100% blame that on her because it's probably the situation she maybe didn't even didn't even want to be with him like and there's, there's a lot of like manipulation stuff that could be you know it could be th- be thrown into the situation for argument and whatnot. And like, yeah, okay, you know, I, I can see that one. But, you know, did not stop her from getting on with him. And it's kind of fucked up to the boyfriend, really. But at the same time, in this situation, I can't 100% blame her because there's a lot of gray area going on here. It's just hopefully she learned going forward. Just one person, please. So, well, we'll call that there. But, however, that is, um, uh, that that's what you know relationships in school happens uh it they you know like between teachers and students it shouldn't and uh it's uh it's not a good thing by any means but it does occur uh so that's not necessarily what makes me sick about this dude um being a teacher myself i would never do a student Fucking ever. First off, if you ain't in your like late twenties, <laughs> ain't happening, man. I I ain't going through all that drama. And you're like, nah, I'm good. I, I want myself a woman, not a kid. Nah, fuck that. Uh, but I understand that that situation does occur, and that's not necessarily what grosses me out. What really grosses me out is the part where he said that he was planning. On getting this, like grooming this girl since fucking middle school, waiting for her to come of age so that he can be with her. That's fucking sick, dude. That's fucking gross. Like, not sick in a good way. That's fucking gross. Like, that's that's absolutely fucking disgusting. That's the part that really grossed me out of that. <laughs> that, that, really, that really grossed me out when he, when he was mentioning that. <sighs> And then he breaks her neck and fails to kill her. Like, I'm glad he didn't kill her. I'm glad that she's alive. I'm glad that she's still able to live her life and reheal all the damage to her brain and to her, her neck. And uh, it sounds like he didn't destroy the spinal column. Because uh, otherwise she probably would have been paralyzed forever. So, luckily he just broke the neck. So that's unfortunate, but good. Um, and... Apparently not enough uh, lack of oxygen brain damage to destroy a lot of her functionality uh, besides, you know, the basics. So, like, that's... I mean, fuck, good for her, man. Like, good for her to survive. Like, her, again, as I was saying, her spirit was fighting like crazy. So, like, I'm really, really happy that she's okay. But, like... You know, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to pull the American Dad, uh, <laughs> like to say the horrible thing in the situation. You know, like if you watch the American Dad uh, episode when Stan keeps trying to kill himself or whatnot, and he fails to do it, and Rogers like, you know, I don't want to. You know, I don't want to make, make you feel bad or anything, but like, you own guns. How did you fuck this up? <laughs> How did you fuck up killing yourself? It's kind of the situation. Is like, I mean, like. I'm glad that you didn't kill her, because she didn't deserve to die. I mean, she definitely deserved talking to for you know trying to date two people at once, one being a much older teacher. Uh, but like, she didn't deserve to die. Um, so like, but if you were going to kill her, like, I don't know how you fucked that up, dude. Completely unconscious. In your vehicle, apparently no one to see you for miles because you were doing this thing in bro- not broad daylight, but like right in front of the fucking windows of your vehicle. And yeah, no one saw shit. Like you had all the time in the world. You had a, a, a suspect that was not fighting back. Like, 
you literally could have just been like, okay, let's see what happens. And grab part of her head and just keep pushing until it was like, literally, you're on the other side. Like, I mean, I don't know how you fucked it up, personally, but I'm glad that you did. Because, uh, fuck you. And uh, enjoy your ass rapings in prison. So that's going to do it here for us today, guys. Uh, yeah, she definitely lived a nightmare, but I'm really glad that uh, she did not die from it. And that she seems to be living a happy and healthy life. So good on you. Good for you. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> I'm happy. And a, a nice outcome. And the, sorry, Jeremy. I, I've been watching too much Mr. B. I knew you were in on it. And you turned out not to be in on it. So I get my bad man. <laughs> my bad. Mr. B sent me on a path to think it was you. And I, I'm sorry, Jeremy. My bad, man. My bad, my bad, dog. So that's going to do it for us here today. Nice, quick air quotes quick 30-ish minute <laughs> video here thank you so much for joining me guys and i will see you all next time